Welcome back to the Urban Suburban Garden. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at both the gardens here and a new one up on the top here. As you can see, I'm not holding the camera this week. I got a little help. So we're going to get deep into it and talk about everything I got going on out here and how everything is growing. As you can see, as we get closer to the plants, we're going to start over here with the white potatoes. <clears throat> everything is growing great. Now these have been in here roughly 75 to 80 days. I didn't know exact date that they popped up out of the ground, but it was the first week of April when I put them in there and they were <clears throat> uh, off and going when I put them in the ground. I mean, in the pots. And as you can see, look at over here. Not as much on this one. I'm rubbing the bob, I feel one there. But let me pull this one here from the back. You can see it, because that's a black bag. It's gonna be harder for you to see it. But in this one particular here, you can feel the bulging. And you can see these popping out right here. So yeah, it's definitely potatoes in here. The front is bulging out. And the good thing about having them in these spots, I could just pull them around like I want to. And they're pretty light right now. So they definitely need some water. And it's the same with that one over there. Now the flowers that come up out of the top of them are no longer there because for some reason, the birds here in my area, every time a flower pops up, the birds are eating. But the plant is doing well. As you can see down at the bottom, it's starting to get some dead foliage. So that's probably letting me know one of two things that is coming to an end or uh, it needs more water. And I believe it's starting to come to an end. I was watching um, uh, one of the other growers that we follow, Kim's Corner, I think that's her name. She was harvesting her, pay, her potatoes in a video I watched yesterday, and she was around day 75. And the plants were looking similar, a little bit more rough than these. So I'm definitely gonna let these go longer so the bottoms and everything start really looking like they're dying off and flopping over. And that's when we'll do our harvest and see what we got. Let's take a look on the other side. Over here, as you can see, our plants are doing well. Look how well the vink is doing. Rocking and rolling. And deeper in the, we're not even at summer yet. I think we got a couple more days before we hit summer. And they are rocking and rolling. And these are uh, marigolds that I um, had some seeds. I threw them in some dirt and they started popping out. So, and back in the corner, y'all seen that in the past videos, the tomato plant that is starting to rock and roll. Those are like a great tomato. Uh, forgot the name of them. But uh, let me pull the tag up, you can see. Husky Cherry Reds. So they're starting to definitely rock and roll now. And as we go around, we're gonna see quite a few other tomato plants that just kind of came up on their own from the soil we used last year. Right here in this corner is the zucchini. And if you remember in the last video about two weeks ago, it damn sure wasn't doing this well. So it is definitely starting to take off see the flower starting to develop in there and that is a male flower there and once a female comes up and you know the males always come up first the flowers the females will come right behind it with the fruit on it so they can pollinate and we got plenty of those for, for y'all to see as we work our way through the garden let's come on inside here starting over here on this side here remember i just mentioned how many tomato plants that uh we have going in here now we're gonna to get to all the other stuff in the back because I got a lot to talk about with those. Remember the shade cloth was here, but it's no longer here and there's reason why that for that. As I said, I'm reusing the soil that we used last year and look at all of the tomato plants. Here's one, here's one, one, here's one, here's one, here's another one. There's another one I think back here they all started coming out and especially, this is just where the carrots are in this area here. So I'm assuming, and it's probably a good assumption that this part of the soil is where the tomatoes were at last year and all of those tomatoes that fell and you know bust and the seeds fell into the soil. I just carried them along to this year and we have all of these gone. And the carrots, you can see, look at the bush. And we have the two different type carrots. We have the rainbow carrots and just the regular orange carrots. And you see how well they're doing. Uh, none of them are starting to you know, die off or anything yet. And I feel a carrot. Oh, matter of fact, we got something to show this week. Come on over here, camera lady. You can see I have some carrots developing down there. 
See those right there? That's the orange one here. This is the rainbows because it's a different color. That one is a purple one. I think that's yellow. Let me get out of the sunlight there. You can see them better. There you go. Yeah, so we're definitely starting to get some development on the carrots. Definitely nowhere near being ready, but at least I do see something starting to develop there, so I'm good and happy about that. Now, let's slide back over here into the, this corner and we'll work our way out. Over in this section here, the two uh, squashes that I have, the yellow squash and the baby squash. The baby squash are the ones you see vining all over the place. I got them running all up the back fence here and across the bottom here where the carrots are. Um, they're just running everywhere, all across the back through the uh, broccoli, and we're going to get into that in a second because I got a lot to talk about with that. Uh, but that's what, you know, there's a lot of baby squash in here taking off. And the yellow squash down in the inside there, you can see a couple of them that look like they may have been pollinated. So we'll keep our eye on them in the coming weeks. Um, hey, matter of fact, here you go, right here. See that? That's the bigger squash, the regular yellow squash. So in the coming weeks, we should be able to see if they were pollinated, and I believe they were, and uh, we'll watch them grow. But as we work our way down, let's start with this broccoli over here. And I already talked about the carrots and stuff, but the broccoli, just got hammered. I was um, keeping an eye on them. They were growing great. And I've seen a few holes here and there developing. And then one day I came out and the, uh, the leaf hopper worm, I believe that's what they're called, just went bananas. Had got in and tore them up and I seen them up on top of the leaves and they, they, they were really drooping today. So I definitely need to get some water up here. Um, and I had to take the shade cloth down so I can get back there and do some maintenance on those. And I got it sprayed and it killed off. It looked like I took, I eradicated the problem I had. I don't see any new uh, holes and new, new damage, but I did notice that the broccoli is definitely starting to develop here. And I'm going to run into a problem because later on in the season, when the broccoli was developing, since I got a late start on the broccoli, I could have folded these leaves up over top of the broccoli head to save it from burning the tops of it. So I'm going to try to uh, compensate with that by using, yes, um, by using um, the shade cloth. Let me get up inside here. Well, yeah, back to the, the broccoli, they just got hammered. And so if I don't get anything from it, I, I know what it, my problem was. And um, I definitely need, and they mulch too. It's just too much sun. That's what it is, because the soil is still fairly wet. It's just too much sun. And um, after I do a little maintenance in here today, I'll um, get in, put the shade cloth back up, because for the next few days, it's going to be in the upper 90s, and the sun is blasting. And the sun, this area here gets all kind of sun. And if you, you know, like I said in the uh, past videos, that was the reason why I had the shade cloth in this area is because these uh, vegetables here should have been planted uh, a month earlier than what I did, except the zucchini back there, I mean the squash back there. Now up here, and I just noticed a, another tomato plant, we have the beets up here, the two beets, the Detroit red, and the, uh, I forgot what the Saginaw, something beets in the back. But I have another tomato plant that just popped up out of here, well at least where well, now that I could see it. And again, and there's another one, jeez, right there. So with them this far in here, and I plan on succession planting the tomatoes, uh, now I don't have to worry about doing it. Um, I'ma just let those tomato plants grow. And as the season goes along, I'll have plenty of tomatoes. Now remember what I said about those uh, leaf hopper worms that were the, uh, on my broccoli, they also got to my cabbage. But again, I sprayed, eventually got the BT, I got it sprayed, and I think I got eradicated now because everything, the heads in here, are starting to definitely grow and get nice and hard, and I don't see any new holes. Get around here. Any new holes developing on that, uh, or the cabbage heads. Last year when I grew cabbage, I was able, I was successful with growing the red cabbage. The white cabbage like I have here, I didn't have any luck out of. The worms and the bugs got me last year before I got any of the, the white cabbage. But uh, this year, look like I'm gonna get a decent harvest out of them, but I definitely gotta get them covered back up. Those are one of those plants that I should have had gone a month ago. I mean, a month earlier than I did. 
and but the shade cloth definitely works and the romaine lettuce the great thing about this here we've been continuously coming up here just peeling off leaves when we're making salads and whatever else we needed the lettuce and it's just continuously growing back and as long as i keep it covered up in water it seems to keep growing so as long as it keeps growing i'm gonna leave those there until they start to look sickly um we'll just continue to keep those going to later on in the season this is where the spinach was at right here and it bolted Again, that was one of those crops that you plant early spring. You get your harvests from them because when you get deep in the summer this time of the year, it's going to uh, start bolting because it's too hot out here for them. All right, over here in the bean section, we got the two beans, green beans and the purple beans. The green beans are vining up just like we wanted it to do. That's why we built up this nice trellis fence net thing here. And it's doing fantastic. We haven't got any beans off of this yet because it's still doing it in the stretch process but we should be having some here soon. Over to the left is the uh, purple beans. And I thought these would vine up the trellis, but it didn't. But they've already taken off and started growing beans already. Let's see if we can get in there. And as you can see, there's a few there. So yeah, everything is doing really, really well over here. And we're starting to get some uh, fruit from our, our growth. Over here, marigolds are doing great. And uh, one of the, um, the viewers, she told me how to pronounce that plant there. And I keep calling it the wrong thing. Is Cialis, Cialis, something like that. <laughs> Down here in my onion plant section, I told y'all about that, but we're definitely starting to get something going here with the red onions in the back. So we might eventually, later on in the year, get something out of this here, batch here. Across the front here, no, no luck, just, uh, the ones we put in the ground, we might get a little something off here later on in the year. But yeah, that's my onions. My onion game sucks. So next year, hopefully we'll do a little better. And again, the tomato plant that I told you last week, uh, a couple weeks ago, excuse me, that it came up out of the ground here. Uh, we got another one there and, and you see how well she's doing. The wild part about it, I don't know what none of these tomatoes that are coming up out of the ground are. Last year I had Roma tomatoes, pasta tomatoes, grape tomatoes, and I think it was one other. And so it could be any, any of the four that I was growing last year. So we'll just have to wait and see. But down here in the strawberry section, strawberries, the section was doing great. And I told you about it and I showed you in the last video how the strawberries were doing very well. And here you go, you got some strawberries right up here that are developing. I've been battling with the birds in the area uh, so I can get some of the strawberries because they are in here daily trying to get them. But now we've pretty much replenished all the ones that were ripe enough to, to eat. Uh, except maybe this one right here that's still can turn red. So the birds haven't test messed with that. But I was sitting up in the gazebo and I was sitting there watching the birds this down here tearing them up. So I keep a net over those in the coming weeks. Matter of fact, we got one red one down here oh, that the birds, let me see. It's down here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Birds got it. But it's all good. I got plenty of strawberries out of this batch so far this year. All right, over here, once again, another tomato plant popped up out of this little pot with that marigold, and they definitely need some water because they're drooping. And we, we're starting to actually flower up here too. So this planted plant obviously is not going to get that big with this little pot so the roots aren't getting that big. But we might get a couple of tomatoes off here though. It's look healthy, just need some water. Right across here, all five of these are sweet potatoes. And this one here and this pot here is, has taken off, but this is what I was expecting it to do. It start vining out and all of these are going to vine up and over this fence here. And they're all starting to take off and starting to grow. It took a little while, but now that we got consistent heat, that they are definitely running now. So let's make our way on down here, right here, more of my flowers. See how well they're doing. They're attracting all the bees so they can pollinate all these other plants that I have in here that need to be pollinated. Uh, over here, we had the peppers. We got sweet peppers and hot peppers, and they're starting to do their thing. And the uh, cucumber plant here, is evading the space a little bit, but I continuously tie that up to the fence as I go along. But everything over here is doing great. Like I mentioned, these two plants here are cucumbers, and you see all the flowers open up on them. And uh, the bees stay in this area here, pollinating those, so we should have some cucumbers in the coming weeks 
I know it's a few of them I already kind of started in there. And then down here on the end, we got the two tomato plants and there's a few tomatoes starting to develop in there. There's a couple in the back there. And I think those are the early girls and You got the name tag there. But yeah, we got tomatoes off and growing. And in the other garden, there's some tomatoes up there too. The uh, yellow boy and the purple ones, the purple Cherokee purples, they're all growing. Now let's, let's uh, take a look at the other garden. Now up here in garden number two, as you can see, everything is doing great. This was the first tomato plant that came up out of the garden. Then that's when I started realizing I'm gonna have tomato plants growing everywhere. And you see how well this girl is doing. And then back there, that's a zucchini that just ain't never take off. But the flowers are popping up out of her. But she just never got traction. But I got plenty of other ones and we're gonna see them further down in the garden. Now up here in my corn section, I'm gonna show y'all a little something. Remember I kept telling y'all how I do it. Now, granted, the viewers, I could have taken this section here, whole section, and slid it down and put it right next to this section here. So we would have had better pollination, cross pollination. The wind would have blew this way or the other way, north, north, south, south, or uh, east and west. It would have been blowing everywhere. But because I have it situated the way I do, I self pollinate. And as you can see, uh, my tensils are up here and they are open. So you see they're ready and it constantly dropping pollen as I hit it. And these one here, they're probably out of pollen now. Oh, close to it, no, it's still on my finger. But what I do, and you've seen it in my other videos, I just pull a piece off, I come right down, and just rub it right across the silks. And if you see, I even left the one last week, one a couple weeks ago when I did it. I just left it hanging on there. So, and any of the new ones, these are new ones that are kind of popping up here, and there's another set down here. So daily, or at least every other, every other day, I come down and just pull some fresh ones off, and I shake them too. And look at all that pollen dropping down there. And that causes all that just to drop down around there, pollinate these silks, and we getting corn heads. Now, now I'm gonna say this, last year when I grew these in the six gallon pots that's in the other garden, the green bags, the, the great size corn, you saw them in the past videos. These are much bigger. And I mentioned when I first put these in here, these are 16 gallon sections. So the, 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 the area for the corn to grow is much, much more bigger. And that's the open section as you can see there. And so the roots of this is all over the place. And these are getting huge, huge. And I, last year when I did this, I didn't get no more than two ears per corn stalk. This year I have is one popping up here, is one here, is another, another one developing down here. Now, not to say that all of those are going to develop into mature heads. I hope they do. But I noticed with having this much more space for the roots to grow, the plants are getting much bigger, and I'm gonna probably have more corns, uh, corn this year than I had last. So that's a great thing. Here's a whole, and, and, and most of them, they splitting off to where I have, here was the main here, this one, the side shoe came up, and there's another one that came up right here. And I have a few more in here that have even, even thicker and bigger than that. Uh, let's see, even back here, you got a couple, and I believe, no, this was two that came out the pot at the same time, and I left them, and that's just two uh, corn stalks actually in the same pot. But yeah, as you can see, the corn section is doing great. Like I said, I just come in, periodically just make sure I brush each one of these silks that pop up here a fresh one coming up right here I'm gonna just shake this one and just let the pollen fall on down there but as I said I come and I, I brush these silks constantly so we should definitely get some great size ears out of this corn this year let's work our way down here working our way to the melon section I did leave one of my uh, other flowers up here and what happened another tomato plant popped up out of there. Now here in the melon section, 
Then I told y'all I left this whole section down here covered with the landscape fabric for the melons to run and cover this whole area and it's working exactly the way I expect it to. Now we do have a couple straight ones that like to run off and I, left, I came up here, I saw these. Now I try to direct everything this way. These wanted to take off and go that way. So I just, when I see them starting to go that way, I just turn them in the direction I want them to go to and they just keep on going that way. Now there's a few of them, this, the, the ones I'm dealing with right here, these are the honeydew melons. And this is the only section with the honeydew melons of the eight that's up here, the, the eight sections. Uh, I think I might have one more honeydew melon, which is in that section there. So it's a total of three plants, I believe. The sugar babies, it's probably about five or six. Cantaloupe, the same thing, and it's four uh, yellow watermelons. And you see how thick it's getting in here. So, you know, a week, two weeks ago, I was able to come in here and identify each one of the plants so you could see what they were, but it's now taken off. Look, all the yellow flowers are opened up. And on some of them, if I can get around here and see where do we have any females that we can point out. No, I don't see any down in this group here, at least not yet. These are all male. So these are all, and again, these flowers are just pretty much all popping up. And I'm sure some females in there somewhere, but they all eventually get pollinated. And this, the idea is working. The only thing I was wondering about today when I was up here earlier was because I have three different type of melons in here. The yellow babies, I mean the yellow, um, yellow watermelon, sugar babies, cantaloupe and honeydew where it's for. Um, with the pollen from the, the, each one of those uh, flowers cross pollinate and cause a problem with the seeds. Cause what I wanted to do when I harvested these plants, I mean these fruits this year, keep some of the seeds from those fruits and try to grow them again next year. I heard of something like that with tomato plants you know, they might cross pollinate each other. And, the, you know, the fruits that it developed this year will be fine. But the following year, if you try to use those seeds, you might have an issue. So if you know of anything or heard of anything like that, if you know got any comments, leave a comment down in this section. I would love to know more about that. All right, here in the zucchini section, you can see this zucchini here is starting to take off. And I don't know what this flower is here. It started coming up out of there. I didn't want to kill it because I didn't know what it was. It looked like it was a flower and not a weed. So I left it there and it's still growing. Down in here, as you can see, you're starting to get development and growth flowers. And these are more than likely males. The males always come up first and then the females come behind and they get pollinated. And I don't see any females yet. So yeah, in the coming weeks, we should definitely have something going with that one. And these two here, the same thing. They're the same zucchini, came from the same batch. But uh, actually I have, what, just one, this one is starting to take off over here. This one here is a little sickly looking, just like that one that when we first came into this garden was in that 10 gallon pot by itself. Wasn't doing that well. So we'll keep an eye on them. Hopefully they'll pick up and we'll get something out of them. And here we are, this is an eggplant. And the eggplant is definitely starting to do its thing flowers starting to develop off of it. So where the flowers are, that's where the, the plant is eventually gonna be. And I hear one down here. But yeah, they definitely doing much better than it was. The leaves are nice and green now. And they were faded, starting to go yellow like the ones down on the bottom. But it looks like it's corrected itself with the feedings that I've given it. And uh, here in the coming weeks, we should have something. And that's a marigold plant that I threw off in there that I grew it from seed. Same thing here, we talked about this girl a couple weeks ago where another tomato plant popped up out of a, a flower pot with my flowers and I just left it in there letting it do its thing and I do not know what kind of tomato it is, but we're gonna get something from it. And last but not least in this section here, all uh, potatoes, just one here in this first section here, this is a white potato and it needs a little, probably a little bit more soil on it to stand up on its own because now it's starting to flop over and support itself on the red potatoes, which are right across the back here. Excuse my arm. All of these back here to that section here are all red potatoes. And this section and this section are red potatoes. They've been backfilled at least one time. And as you can see, the soil level is all the way up to pretty much the top of the rim. So now what I'm gonna to do to help out with the keeping moisture in here is add mulch to both of these gardens. 
So that's what I'll be doing here in the coming days. And then last but not least here, my last two tomato plants. And this one here is a Cherokee, uh, Cherokee purple and a, a, a lemon boy is in the back. And they definitely already starting to develop um, tomatoes. It's there, there. And it's a nice size one all the way back down here on the bottom. You can see that. But yeah, that's what the garden is looking like. We're gonna take another look at the garden here in the next coming, I'm gonna say at least two weeks. I'll give it another two weeks. And by then we'll probably have four heads of corn over here and much more fruit show, to show you down there because most of the stuff down there was started much earlier than the stuff that's uh, up here. But that's all I have for you in this video. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, share and subscribe. And until the next one, keep growing.